Our lesson this morning comes to us from the Hebrew Scriptures, Psalm 27. Hear these words from the New Revised Standard Version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be anxious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Will you please pray with me? O oh God, come to us in the quietness of this very moment. Center our hearts and our minds on you and you alone. Open us to the power and to the presence of your Holy Spirit and remind us that your love, mercy, and grace come to us unasked for and free. Amen. In a church that I served in Maine, the long-serving organist and choir director who had been in her position for several decades retired just before my arrival. The choir over the years um, was always small in number. They weren't particularly skilled. You guys are great. <laughs> They weren't particularly skilled, but Connie did her best to whip this little ragtag group into shape. But, you know, the problem was that the choir members had a habit of, you know, I should have brought a prop, but, you know, they would bury, bury their faces in the music. And so they weren't looking up to watch for direction. I'm sure that was all that was wrong, but Connie did her best. So I, at her funeral 16 years ago, I told the story that I had heard about the time that she had challenged the, the choir to sing this, this particularly difficult piece of music and the choir was behind and the congregation was in front. So as they stood, Connie had put this giant 
banner on the front pew that said, look up. You can do it. Look up. So that became a frequent mantra that Connie used to encourage the choir each time they sang to praise God. Look up. You can do it. The book of Psalms is a, a collection of songs and prayers that express the heart and soul of humanity. In them, a whole range of emotions, a whole range of human experience are expressed. And the Psalmist writers, they're pouring out their hearts and their true feelings in these words reflecting a, a dynamic, powerful, life-changing friendship that they had with God. The psalmists confess their sins, they express their doubts, fears, and they ask for God's help in times of trouble, pain, distress, and through their words, they express praise in worship. Our text this morning that Jackie just read is Psalm 27. And the author for this, as well as half of the 150 Psalms, is attributed to David, who the Hebrew scriptures names as the king of the United Monarchy of Israel and Judah. Now, he reigned from 1000 to 962 BCE, before the Common Era. So David wrote this particular psalm during a time when, when he was in trouble. And everything seemed dark for this king who once had been a shepherd boy. Here we see the, the presence of enemies and the, the trauma of false accusations and the writer is seeking deliverance in order to worship God yet again. So David is writing these words from his heart that tell us how confident he is in God. He seeks God's blessing. He seeks God's protection. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear, he writes. Fear. Fear is an unpleasant emotion. It oftentimes is considered a negative emotion. There are things that we all fear, whether it's a fear of heights or spiders or snakes or flying or dogs or flying dogs <laughs> thunder whatever it is our our individual lists of fears are endless aren't they now for some maybe one or two things bother us uh, for others there could be a whole list and for even fewer it might be a, this list that become debilitating by our fears now, universally, the um, function of fear is that kind of that we avoid harm, this kind of fight or flight. Now, whether our fears are, are, are imagined or are real, I mean, for those who are afraid of heights, for example, um, well, we stay away from ladders. I mean, just don't do it. But sometimes. We can't avoid, we can't go around. We have these fears right in front of us. There's nothing we can do to get out of it. And so we assess, we plan, we seek partners, and we do the best we can given the circumstances as we face our fears. Now for people of faith, when we are fearful, 
we turn to God by reading scripture, praying, or seeking counsel from others who share our convictions. The psalm is a plea for God to answer the psalmist's prayers, that they remain steadfast. Now, even for the faithful, it is not easy to place our trust in God. One commentator writes, in a world teeming with broken relationships, personal disappointments, public scandals, political games, cultural disrespect, and increased terrorist threats, trust is difficult to extend even to God. Now Psalm 27 gives us help for today, but more importantly, hope, hope for the future. David says that Unwavering confidence in God is an antidote for fear and loneliness. In the face of difficulties that we face individually, collectively as a community of faith, as a congregation, collectively as a nation, and yes, even the world's issues that are confronted before us, the psalmist's words give us pause. Hope? Hope? Is there any hope in all that we face, in all that we see? I mean, just when we think our issues are bad, just when we think that we have it rough, the nonstop news coverage bringing us in the moment images from Ukraine are gut wrenching. Where is the hope amid the bombs, the destruction, the devastation among invading Russian troops in the country of Ukraine? On Transfiguration Sunday two weeks ago, I spoke about thin places where we are just a little bit closer to God and to God's glory. Well, Agnes, Agnes Norfleet writes, there are certain passages of scripture that are especially helpful in transporting us to a special place with God in our time. The words and images of Psalm 27, she writes, leads us to such a place, a kind of thin place where human and divine meet in a beautiful closeness. Now, I mentioned last week that Barbara Brown Taylor, her calling lent 40 days to remember what it is like to live by the grace of God alone and not by what we can supply for ourselves. So today's psalm does not say to us that we will not face difficulties, fears, loneliness, or troubles in our lives. Rather, when troubles come, and they will, when troubles come, we can be assured of God's presence. That's what Lent for us is all about, is our pausing, being cognizant, being aware and looking for God's presence right before our very eyes. So there is hope. While we normally associate hope in the season of Advent, you recall the, the second Sunday in Advent is hope. We, as a people of faith, 
live in expectant hope of God's presence in our lives and in the world. Hope begins with the recognition that the world currently as it is, it is not how it should be or is intended to be. And so while we grieve at the death and destruction for the people of, of Ukraine and what they are facing right now, we are people of hope for a better world as we offer our prayers, as we offer our, our time toward an effort for relief, as we bring about our talents on how we might be able to do something, how we offer our resources as our hearts simply cry and all that the people of Ukraine are facing right now. And we do this as people of faith on all sorts of causes that we, that we feel strongly about. So this current crisis going on in our world is in our wheelhouse. We can do it. We are thankful that we aren't in it. Connie Schultz, the syndicated columnist, writes, We love, so we grieve for the people of Ukraine. We love, so and so we cling to signs of hope still. Wouldn't it be so easy to be overwhelmed with our fears and doubts and pains that each and every one of us face each and every day? Today's psalm reminds us, or invites us really, during our Lenten journey, during our 40 days as we walk to the cross, to look up, to look up for God's presence here within our eyesight, to look up, to pray, to see our troubles in the images throughout the words of this psalm. Psalm 27 is an exclamation point reminder to lift up our eyes, lift up our hearts to God. Let our hearts Take courage, be strong, as the text says. Look up and then put our trust in God. May we, you and I, may we be set high on a rock, be set on a high rock where our enemies and our troubles cannot reach us. May it be so. Amen.